In terms of cinema, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is undoubtedly a milestone. In terms of Walt Disney and his studio, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is the cornerstone. Because everything that followed, all the cartoon features, the live action features, the theme parks, everything that Disney went on to do was built on this one film. It's the ultimate adventure in film production at a time when to do an animated full-length film was absurd. This guy said, you know, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it. This was a very risky venture. If Snow White failed, the studio would have failed. Everybody thought Disney was out of his mind for even attempting a feature-length animated film. The trades were calling it Disney's folly. And he proved, despite the critics, and that, in fact, it could be done. How many people love this film, saw this film around the world? It's an extraordinary story. Even just the story of the making of the film itself, it's an extraordinary venture. One of the great American success stories of all time. When Snow White was released, people immediately realized the importance of the movie. That doesn't always happen with a film. Sometimes a film gains importance as time goes on. But the day after the premiere on December 21st, 1937, Walt was getting wires from various notables in the motion picture industry saying, this is one of the most important pictures ever made. One of the critics who reviewed the film when it first opened compared it to D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. And I think today that may seem extraordinary, but that is exactly how important Slow White and the Seven Dwarfs was. Isn't it bright and shiny? Oh, it's beautiful. It changed everything, of course, for animation, but also in terms of uh, live action, too. Opening up audiences for fantasy films, I think, you know, it's, it's reverberated through the years. But at the time, nobody believed that anybody ought to do a cartoon that would be a full-length thing. And I had many people tell me when I was working there that, who wants to see a full-length cartoon? The very idea of sustaining an hour and a half with animation, how could that be done? Because we were told by all the big movie moguls in Hollywood that it was OK six, seven minutes like the shorts, but an hour and a half, no way. Big reason was that uh, you run out of funny things to do. So you had to have a, a laugh a minute. And the bright colors would hurt your eyes. Everybody get up and walk out. What must Disney have thought? What must the people who worked for him have thought when the trade papers were talking about this film as though it was born to be a disaster? Don't be afraid. We're right behind you. Yes. Right behind you. But Walt, of course, plugged ahead. He didn't believe that. He felt that if you had a solid story, not only laughs in it, but pathos, tragedy, uh, it would go. And I think Walt had this feature in the top of his mind, oh, early on. I don't think he would ever have been satisfied to just make shorts. He also, I think, lived that story, Snow White, and it's more truly his than any of the features he did since. Well, he always loved the story of Snow White, and he had seen a film production of it, a silent film, when he was a kid. And it was a very unusual screening. It was for the newsboys of Kansas City. And they arranged it so that they would show the film simultaneously on four screens. So that alone would have, you know, impressed in his mind. But the story also was of deep interest to him. I think that the way that Walt grew towards Snow White was built into Walt from the very beginning. Walt was a storyteller, first and foremost. And when Walt first came to Hollywood, he wanted to be a director. He wanted to go into live action. And when that wasn't available to him, he went back into animation and started pushing that. So it naturally grew to where he felt he could take on this idea of telling a story. Once there was a princess. Was the princess you? 
a long story that would involve real characters, real emotions, that would have funny situations, but would also have pathos. Also, there were a lot of business incentives because Disney found that although he was producing these wonderful cartoons that were very, very popular, these films were costing more and more and returning less and less. So Disney made the decision, which had been made similarly by Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy, that if there was any future in the industry, it had to be by moving away from shorts to full-length feature animation. The first I heard about Snow White, it was almost a river. See, Walt brought new people into the studio who were good at drawing girls, and uh, he was just building his staff. He was trying to organize things, and he didn't really tell anyone yet what he had in mind. Finally, it dawned on us that he's going to make a feature film. <laughs> then Walt called us all back one night, and he went through the whole story, telling everything, acting out all the parts the way he would do it. And uh, we were sold. So I don't see how you'll ever finish it, but uh, she had sure a great idea. And then uh, we all put our heart into it. Just whistle while you work. And cheerfully together we can tidy up the place. Very typical of Walt Disney. He kind of plucked a figure out of the air that it would cost about $250,000, he thought. Very rapidly they realized that that wasn't going to be sufficient and it escalated to $400,000. His brother Roy handled the finances and probably tore his hair out most of the time because Walt was always pushing for more and more perfection. It wasn't about making money at that time. It was about being better, getting better, and being the best that, that they could be. This is somebody who has a passion to do this as well as they can possibly do it. Snow White is the most deliberated upon movie of all time. We're talking roughly four and a half years of almost total devotion by Walt Disney. And the budget keeps on growing and growing and growing. Now, there came a point when Disney's finances had all but run out. And Roy Disney said to his brother, you've got to show the film to the bankers, which was the Bank of America. If you don't show them the film, they're not going to invest more money in it because they don't know what they're investing in. Walt was a wonderful salesman and could sell anything. So they brought this executive in, and they showed him, which Walt hated, the pencil tests. There were places where there wasn't any film, and so maybe there were still pictures put in of sketches, and then there was no soundtrack, so Walt would put in the lines or he'd sing one of the songs, and he'd say, this is where this happens, Joe, and then this happens. And this banker just sat there impassively watching and going, yes, yes, I see, yes. The guy said nothing after the screening. They walked to the projection room, or walking him to his car. It must have been the longest walk in the world. And he got in his car and he said, oh, by the way, that thing's going to make you a pile of money. Drove off, and they got the check. Only for you. In Snow White, everything had to be tackled head on first time round. And that's why it's amazing. <laughs>